Hello and welcome to a new game from CCC 11's qualification round. We have Lee Lavit White playing against Dark Queen, a relatively new neural network based engine, which is uh, trained on online human games and it's using Lila's engine. It is developed by Eric Hawkins. They started with e4, c5, knight f3, and knight c6, and we have a Sicilian d4 and after c takes on d4 we are already out of the book and here Lila of course recaptured the pawn and after knight f6 we have knight c3 and in this position black has uh, many choices in the reverse game Lila preferred here the, the most popular e5 and after knight b5 trying to, to get with the knight to d6 and d6 uh, by Lila we got a Sveshnikov Sicilian on the board and um, eventually the game was drawn. In this one, instead of e5, Dark Queen preferred e6 and we got ourselves the Four Knights variation of the Sicilian, a variation that I like to play myself as it gives uh, very good chances for black and white must really know how to play this properly in order to keep an edge. For example, in a Sicilian, many times White likes to employ the, the English attack with moves like bishop e3 and queen d2, long castling, f3 and g4. Well, in this variation of the Sicilian, this doesn't work because after bishop e3, black has this very strong bishop b4 pinning this knight and attacking e4. And white can play here f3, which uh, falls into his plan anyway. But uh, after d5, Black gets in this break uh, successfully and uh, has a very good position. Here uh, e5 is not possible, it's guarded by the knight on c6 and uh, taking here also not very good because of knight d5 and black is absolutely fine here. Instead of f3, white can also try to defend this pawn with bishop d3 but d5 again gives black uh, very good chances, black has equalized but to something like e takes on d5, knight takes, knight takes on c6, b takes on c6. Black's position is uh, very good. If white wants to maintain an edge, then instead of bishop e3, here he can choose between either knight b5, and uh, here black can play d6 and uh, go into Sveshnikov territory, because here white usually plays bishop f4 to put pressure here, forcing e5, and then after bishop g5 we have a Sveshnikov. Or if black wants to avoid the theory from the Sveshnikov, then instead of d6 he can try here bishop c5, and black gets good positions also in this variation. Now white, instead of knight b5, can also try knight c6. These are the two moves, knight b5 and knight c5, which um, give white the best options. And in this game actually, Lila chose knight take on c6. The idea is to remove the defender of e5 and then get in e5. So here now after b takes on c6 and e5, the knight is forced to d5. And here white can maintain an initiative and the pressure with knight e4. Targeting this weak d6 square, taking the knight is not so great because then after pawn takes again black has no problems at all. He can develop both bishops very nicely and uh, he can also play d6 and so on. He has a good center. This is um, not very difficult for black. It's much more challenging for him. Knight e4 followed by c4. Because right now this knight on, uh, on d5 shields very nicely these weaknesses on d6 and d7. But once white gets in c4, white will be able to put a lot of pressure on um, the d file. And here usually black now plays queen c7. This is a good move to play because uh, it attacks the spawn and pretty much forces f4, which weakens uh, the white king. And now queen b6. And here white has many options to continue the game, but the most testing one for black is c4, immediately trying to get rid of this knight. But uh, c4 comes with some concessions because now black has bishop b4. Another good move for black here is uh, knight e3, but in this game we have bishop b4, also very good. When bishop d2 is not good for white because of queen e3 check, this bishop is pinned. 
and black wins a pawn because after queen d2 he just exchanges everything and then uh, takes on f4 with the knight and after king f2 black can even target this e5 pawn with knight g6 and if white now plays rook e1 then f6 is very good getting rid of this pawn and after pawn takes and pawn takes black is not only up a pawn but also has a very strong center and a very very good position if instead of rook e1 white plays knight f3 then f6 is good again but even better is to play c5 not allow this knight to d4 maybe and then playing f6 and getting rid, rid again of the e5 pawn that um, controls some important squares in black's camp is a good idea so bishop d2 is uh, is not a good option here the best option for white is to actually play king e2 and this is still theory king e2 is the best move getting out of the check and now black can play f5 to attack this knight taking on d5 now is not so great because after pawn takes this king is in trouble bishop a6 is threatened with mate so white can't really take on d5 he has to choose between taking on f6 en passant or play knight f2 Lila played knight f2 in this game and now the game continued with bishop a6 pinning this pawn black tries to to keep this knight on d5 and now again the best move for white is to get out of this pin with king f3 pretty amazing stuff so we can see how white needs to to know the theory and has to make all these crazy moves in order to keep an edge in the four knights sicilian now finally the knight has to move there's no alternative so we have knight e7 and now we have bishop e3 bishop c5 bishop takes queen takes and now queen d6 still theory and here taking the queen is not great because of the pawn takes this knight has to move again and he doesn't have good squares so instead of taking the queen much better is to play queen b6 and attack b2 lila now continued with b3 and here we have now bishop b7 both c5 and bishop b7 are good here with the same idea of um, putting this bishop on this diagonal we have bishop b7 and now after rook d rook d1 we have c5 playing c5 here is tempting but not good because after queen a5 this knight can now return to d5 and also the bishop can come to a6 and exchange itself for white's active bishop so instead of c5 we have rook d1 attacking d7 and now we have c5 check king e3 and in this position dark queen played king f7 giving up this pawn we have now queen takes on b6 a takes on b6 and now after rook takes on d7 and bishop c6 the rook returned to d2 and up until this point we followed theory and this position appeared in chandler versus kasparov in um, 1985 in a simul and chandler actually managed to win against kasparov in that game kasparov continued there with g5 in this one dark queen played here rook a3 attacking both of these pawns and this move was also expected by lila we have now knight d3 heading to c1 to defend a2 and allow the rook to do something else we have rook d8 now rook g1 rook d4 bishop e2 bishop e4 and now knight c1 they exchange the pair of rooks and now we have knight c6 and this knight has some nice prospects on b4 and d4 lila continued with g3 and now dark queen played knight d4 instead playing knight b4 attacking this uh, pawn and taking it looks tempting but doesn't work because after king c3 knight takes and king b2 both of these pieces are attacked and uh, black loses the exchange and if he tries to get two pieces for the rook with knight c1 then instead of king takes white can play bishop h5 check and after g6 take the rook and now black has to choose between taking the bishop or saving this uh, knight and uh, after knight d3 which is the better option the bishop can just simply return to e2 and after something like knight b4 king b2 with uh, weaknesses on both sides of the board the rook is very very strong the rook can go to a1 and then a7 and targets some of those weaknesses 
So knight b4 not working in this uh, position. Uh, dark queen played knight d4. And now we have rook f1, h6, rook f2, g5, bishop d3, bishop c6, king e3, king e7, rook b2. And now we have a little dance with the bishops. And then eventually Lila goes bishop d1. And now in this position, dark queen played b5 trying to take here while the spawn is pinned, but Lila took on b5, and now after knight b5, she played bishop c2, to which Dark Queen responded with bishop d5, a move that Lila doesn't like at all, because it gives up the d3 square and allows knight d3 attacking c5. Instead, Lila thought that it's much better to just exchange these pawns and then play knight c3, and uh, defend this bishop and try to maintain it there and not allow knight d3. But dark queen went um, bishop d5 instead of the bishop c2. And now we have knight d3 attacking this pawn. And after knight c3, black gets back the pawn on a2. But after knight c5, the b pawn now has a clear way ahead. We have knight takes on a2, knight d3 now, knight c3, knight b4. And now g takes on f4, pawn takes, rook a8, king d4. And this king would love to, to go up the board and help this pawn. But we have knight e2 check, also attacking the f4 pawn, forcing the king back. Knight c3, king d2 now, knight e4 check, king e2, knight c3 check again, king d2. And now after knight e4 check again, Lila decides to take out that pesky knight. We have bishop takes. And now rook a2, going for a rook exchange, which would be very good for her because uh, without the rooks, a dark queen would have a much more difficult job in uh, stopping the pawn. Dark queen avoided the exchange, of course. We have a check, king c3, rook c8 check, king d4, rook d8 check. And this king would like to move up the board, but Lila realized that he cannot escape these checks. So the king returned to c3. Rook c8 check, king b2, and now after rook c7, we have rook a6. And after rook d7, Lila tries again to move up the board, maybe this rook can help. But after rook c7 check, king d4, rook b7, king c5, rook c7 check, and king b6, we have rook b7 check. And Lila decides to return with the king again. We have rook c7 check, king d4, rook b7. And now after rook a4 and rook d7 check, Lila tries again. But after rook c7 check, king b6, rook b7 check, she returns again. And this time she returns all the way to b2 after d2 check and uh, king b2. We have rook d7 and now after rook a2, h5, king c3 and h4, Lila goes for rook exchange, which is avoided again. King b2, rook c8 knight c2, rook b8, king c3, rook c8 check, king b2, rook b8, and um, after some more moves, eventually in this position, the b pawn is ready to move forward. We have rook h4 now attacking here, rook f1, rook h8, king b3, rook d8, rook d1, and after some uh, more moves, uh, the pawn will... Um, We'll go up again here now after king c4. We have some more checks and some more king moves. But after uh, rook b8, king c3, rook c8 check, knight c4 and bishop d5, rook d4, rook a8, we have b5. And slowly the pawn is moving up the board. And uh, it remains to be seen if, uh, if this extra pawn is enough for a win. We have rook a1, b6. Rook c1 check. And Lila evaluates this position at already over plus 2 for white. We have rook g1 now. Knight d3. Bishop g2. Rook d2. Bishop f3. Knight c4. Bishop d5. Knight d6. And knight is, uh, is ready to support this pawn forward. We have rook g2 hoping for rook takes and pawn takes when the pawn would promote. But of course Lila doesn't take the rook. She defends the rook. And now we have king d7 and b7. And it's very hard to stop this pawn now. Here Lila was expecting rook back to g8. 
and uh, rook to b8 but black's position is beyond salvation here instead we have um, rook takes on c2 and now after king takes on c2 and king c7 black gets the b7 pawn but in the same time he has weaknesses on e6 and h3 and one of them can be taken by the knight we have knight f7 and after bishop takes knight g5 and here dark queen has to decide which one to save and she saves the most important one the, the pawn on e6 since uh, the e5 pawn of course is much more dangerous than the h2 pawn but now we have knight takes on h3 bishop f3 knight g5 bishop h5 king d3 and white's plan is now to move up with the king and try to get to um, to d6 somehow and uh, try to take the e6 pawn but of course the black king won't allow that so easily we have king c5 bishop g4 king c6 bishop h5 h3 bishop e8 check king c7 bishop h5 and now h4 and hereafter bishop g4 since uh, this king can come closer to the e6 pawn Lila's plan is now to play knight h7 and knight f6 and uh, from f6 this knight would uh, support Harry to move up the board. We have king c6, bishop d1, knight h7, bishop f3 check, king c7, bishop e2 and now after knight f6 the h pawn can move up the board and once the pawn gets uh, past h5 this bishop won't be able to stop it anymore so uh, the king will have to come over and um, prevent the pawn from queening but then this bishop has to defend e6 we have bishop c4 h5 king f7 and after h6 and bishop b3 now the king can finally come closer to this pawn we have bishop c4 h7 and after king g7 lila queens harry but the king takes him out and now we have knight e8 taking away g7 and the king can also go to e7 and after that knight c7 and uh, the knight can take on e6 and white wins we have king g8 king e7 king h7 knight c7 king g6 and finally the pawn falls king h5 knight f8 and king g4 attacks this pawn but knight g6 defends it conveniently we have king h5 and now king f6 and now Lila wants to take also the f5 pawn. We have king g4, e6, bishop b5, king e5, bishop e8, knight e7, bishop b5, and now knight takes on f5, bishop a4, e7, king h5, and now we have a rook on the board. The bishop takes, but the bishop is lost after this fork. Knight takes, and now after king f7 and f5, white wins even without the knight why just needs to make sure that the tempos are okay and they are because now after f6 and king f8 f7 forces the king away from f8 and allows king g7 and after this lila can finally promote to a queen and she practiced mate with queen and king so much before that it is easy as pie by now we have king e8 and then finally mate on b8 a very nice performance in the four nights sicilian i would like to thank to gary catch for his ten dollar contribution and i would like to also thank to rene adolf mark sebastian todor radu and guilherme for their contribution please subscribe like and share and check out some of these other videos on the right thanks for watching and see you soon bye bye